since the very recent release of the highly anticipated Fallout television series. Fans of the franchise, who haven't dabbled with the gaming aspect of Fallout in some time, have recently made a return, influenced by the show. So today, I want to delve in to 10 of the best easter eggs and references from the most recent single player title, Fallout 4. Welcome to the video, you're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming. If you enjoy the following, you all know what to do. And if you're new here and aren't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Each secret will be separated into its own chapter, so if you're watching one you're already aware of, you have the easy option to flick over to the next. Of course, with Fallout 4 being almost a decade old, hardcore fans may be aware of some of these secrets, but if one takes you by surprise at all, be sure to let me know in the comment section. If there are any secrets that you're aware of that didn't make it into this video, be sure to let us know them too. With that being said, let's get into the video. The Best Secrets of Fallout 4 the first secret I wish to show you can be discovered all the way at the beginning of the title, shortly before the bombs fall, giving us the world we live in today. After you've finished creating your character, you're given a few minutes or so to explore the home of Nate and Nora in Sanctuary Hills. Some may have noticed the vault calendar pins to the side of the refrigerator in the kitchen area. Upon this calendar is a telephone number for the company, 1884 vault -Tec or 1884-82852-832 when cross-referencing with a rotary phone. Dialing this number, you will hear the following message. As a disclaimer, I do not recommend calling this number, as I have no idea whether it will charge you. I advise against this. Anyway. Thank you for calling vault your first choice in post-nuclear survival. We're sorry, but due to unexpectedly high call volume, all representatives are currently busy Please, stay on the line, and someone will be with you as soon as possible. There are... 181 million callers in front of you. Estimated wait time... 78,643 hours. Thank you for calling Vault. Have a wonderful day. The great green jewel of the Commonwealth, Diamond City, is host to quite a few easter eggs, secrets, and references one of which comes straight from the robotic noodle vendor, Takahashi. Takahashi only knows one phrase. Although the player can have a little fun with the chef, Takahashi will always respond with this same phrase. What some may not have realized is that the phrase, which more or less translates to what would you like to have, is a reference to the 1982 futuristic movie, Blade Runner, starring Harrison Ford. In one scene, Ford's character, Deckard visits a noodle stand, similar to the player of Fallout 4. The gentleman serving asks the exact same question as Takahashi does in the game, even including the imperfect grammar. Diamond City is obviously the in-game alternative to Fenway Park, home of the Boston Red Sox. Now baseball fans are more than likely aware of the famous One Red Seat situated in the stands, which is a reference to Sox legend Ted Williams, who hit a whopping 502 foot home run, in which the sailing baseball hit the head of an attendee in that very seat, or so the story goes. But did fans notice that Bethesda kept this red seat in the game too? Heading to the rear of Shen Kowalski's water treatment stand and facing slightly northeast, just a few rows down from the GNN billboard, the player can in fact spot the red seat standing out from the rest. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring a scope firearm with me, so we'll have to view this with the use of my power armor jetpack. To the far east of the map, the player can discover a stronghold known as the Castle, which as the story progresses becomes the main base of operations for the Minutemen. Heading to the dungeons of the castle, and please be cautious if it's your first time as it's a very dangerous place, will reveal to us our fourth easter egg of the video. Hidden in between the walls of the general's quarters are skeletal remains, showing us that the poor soul, whomever it may have been, was shackled up in here until their final moments. Although it's unclear as to the identity of who this person is, we do know that it's actually a reference to the 1846 short story by American writer Edgar Allan Poe. The title, of course, is The Cask of Amantelato, which tells the story of Montressa, who imprisons his nemesis, Fortunato, in this very same fashion. 
For number 5, as we reach halfway through our list, we need to head to the Glowing Sea, the area which was the drop zone for the atomic bomb. Slightly southwest of the Federal Supply Cache, players will find this abandoned shack. Although at first glance a seemingly small structure, inside you'll find a passageway to a much larger facility, named Installation K21B. Inside this location, among the many goodies and useful materials that the player can find, if you are to travel all the way down to the lowest level, near to the computer station facing the stairwell, there's a United States Covert Operations Manual with a cover title of Not the Soldiers You're Looking For. This is an obvious reference to the Star Wars franchise, in which Obi-Wan uses a Jedi mind trick to pass stormtroopers. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. Collecting this manual will make the player more difficult to detect while sneaking. Todd Howard, game director and executive producer at Bethesda Game Studios, may have something of a high opinion of himself, or colleagues at Bethesda may in fact be playing a prank on him. Heading back to Diamond City, if the player is to visit the dugout inn on the southernmost side of the settlement, behind a room marked as number one, there's a painting upon the wall of the main man himself. This painting is a clear reference as it's almost identical to the work of Jock Louis David, whom painted the famous Napoleon crossing the Alps image. Does Todd Howard consider himself to be a modern day Napoleon? Probably not. I doubt he was even aware of the joke until later on. After the player reaches level 20, there's an event in game that the player can stumble across on the outskirts of Oberlin Station. Following the smoke trails, you'll come across what appears to be a down spaceship of sorts. Around the crashed vessel are green fluid spats trailing off. Following these trailings, you'll soon find yourself at an unmarked cave location. Upon entering, you're greeted by a hostile alien life form whom immediately draws on you. After putting this out of world visitor down, you can collect a very unique weapon in the game, the Alien Blaster Pistol, which yes, you can modify to your liking. Although not overly powerful in comparison to the other weaponry types of the title, it's still fun to vaporize the likes of those such as the pesky mole rats you encounter in the world. There's another unmarked location in Fallout 4 where everybody knows your name. Sort of. To the east of Diamond City and somewhat north, next to the Swans Pond location at the Boston Common, there's an accessible blue door that will allow you to enter the Prost Bar. Inside, players may recognize this very familiar setting, as it's a replica to the Bull and Finch pub made nationally famous for being the setting to the television series Cheers, which is believed to be the launching platform for many famous actors and actresses, such as Ted Danson, Kirstie Alley, Woody Harrelson and Kelsey Grammer but to name a few. It even stretches to having a postal worker sat next to a gentleman in a suit at the rear of the bar, an obvious parody to the characters of Norm Peterson and Cliff Clavin. Heading back to Oberlin Station once more and travelling to the riverbed between said station and the Cambridge Polymer Labs, the player can uncover a boat, which tells the tale of man vs beast. Climbing aboard, you'll find the remains of both a man and a mutated mammal, which looks like a cross between a dolphin and a shark. Surrounding the man is both a bandana and a machete. This finding is a clear reference to the 1975 popular film of Jaws. The scene it's depicting is that of the battle between Quint and Jaws himself. <laughs> And lastly, as we delve into our final secret of the video, we need to travel just a little further north of the Jaws boat, a little past the Cambridge Campus Diner, to the Union Hopes Cathedral. Recognisable by its brightly red painted doors, upon entering, the player may recognise a reference to a character from the popular AMC television series The Walking Dead. Inside is Father Gabe, a ghoulish character who's being attacked by his own kind. This references the character of Father Gabriel from The Walking Dead, where he also locked himself away in his chapel, fending off the television series counterpart to these ghouls, The Walkers. Let me know in the comment section if there were any on today's list you weren't aware of, and also if just like myself, have you gotten the fallout bug after recently watching the television series? If you enjoyed today's video, you all know what to do, and if you're new here and aren't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. 
if the video does well and you guys wish to see another, I'll happily make a second for you. Thank you all for watching, you've been listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.